talking about unruly, talking about things that are annoying, and talking about things that are super frustrating, this news really got a bee under my bonnet. So this is courtesy of The Verge. It says, YouTube is experimenting with hiding dislikes to protect creators' well-being. Stats will still be available in the YouTube studio. Absolute nonsense. Now, the when I saw this, I was like, oh my God, is, are they doing that thing that... um instagram was thinking of doing when kanye went on that rant about you know uh people's well-being and mental health and you know maybe the create no it was a mental health thing more so from kanye's point of view with instagram and then from instagram's point of view they're looking at taking away the number of likes and all that sort of stuff more so to encourage people to share because i guess there was an idea that because people were so hell-bent on making sure certain posts got a certain amount of likes it was sort of holding them back from posting more regular on Instagram and interacting with it and engaging with the app. Hence why they redesigned it and jigged stuff around so you could basically upload more things on there. They want you to spend as much more t as much time as possible on the app. Hence why they have a shop built into it. Hence why they've taken away a lot of the influencer tools and stuff. So you have, you have to basically take away as many influencer tools as they can so people don't bounce off of the app. Hence why they probably did that whole OnlyFans thing where they took away a lot of... Um, I think, no, they deleted, actually, flat out deleted a lot of accounts of OnlyFans um, girls and stuff because, obviously, they would link their OnlyFans account on their bio. And I guess Instagram doesn't want people to get knocked out completely to another competitor, quote-unquote, site, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, I thought YouTube would do the same sort of thing, right? Because, obviously, the like and dislike bar on YouTube, you know, same way with views and comments, it's an integral part of the YouTube ecosystem. It's sort of similar to how I thought the beginning of the end was when Resident Advisor decided to take away the comments because part of the community and part of what made that no part of what made that site special was the community that existed on the comment section of Resident Advisor website. Now I know it exists on the underneath their Twitter comments on when they post and Facebook stuff they'd argue, but the actual community and where it thrived was that whole interaction in the comment section itself and people sharing it on the other social platforms. Blah blah blah. It is what it is. The moment they took that away, the moment that that website completely died, and now maybe apart from myself and the few others there's not many people that are you know checking for the resident advisor website um you know day in day out so i thought youtube doing that would be the death knell in their sort of coffin and stuff and but considering how you know integral the like and dislike bar is to the overall experience and considering that it obviously drives people to sometimes view a video if the dislikes are really high or the upvotes are really high it has a it has a some sort of role to play in how you basically digest the content that's on that site it made me think you know what it's not gonna happen they're not gonna do it because part of the reason why people use youtube is because they can get to dislike and dislike things leave comments and whatnot and what not need be but as things have progressed and as, you know, big companies have gotten involved and YouTube has obviously given us an indication that they kind of favor the bigger kind of mainstream, you know, TV, cable networks, um, shows, um, personalities, uh, purposely putting money behind people like Brie Larson's and pushing out her, her, her channel's got like half a million subs or something. She doesn't really do that much on there, I don't think um it's pretty it's a pretty mediocre let's say youtuber she's a pretty mediocre youtuber for all things considered even though of course she's like an alias hollywood actress but there's obviously a concerted effort to push certain people uh to prop up certain videos to push people people on the algorithm put them on trending all this sort of like really fugazi stuff and ultimately what's happened i think is that those big studios and those big personalities like those big blossoms and people like you know disney's whatever they may be they're now getting a little bit upset that you know fans such as me and you have the option to basically voice our displeasure at the things that they do via the like and dislike bar and also via leaving comments but mostly via the likes and dislike bar because optically and it kind of it kind of um it kind of puts people off watching a video and immediately lets you know that maybe this video isn't going to be of interest and of course it maybe i can add to the likelihood that it's not going to be pushed by the algorithm whatever it may be but they just want to limit that appeal or that possibility for us to voice our opinion in any meaningful way, which is really disappointing because ultimately this is eventually going to hurt the smaller creators like myself, but it's also going to hurt the entire experience of using YouTube in the first place because it's probably the only platform where certain individuals, influencers, look at people like David Dobrik, all this sort of stuff's happening recently with James Charles. It's the only way fans actually have an opportunity to hold people account 
hold people accountable for their actions, especially if it doesn't jive with what they're about, right? Like and dislikes, leaving comments. Now, again, you could just ignore it and like Nikita Dragon and not pretend like it's not happening. But for the most part, those those kind of mechanisms, they play an integral role in kind of stopping certain things, bringing certain things to light, um, allowing creators maybe to go back to the drawing board or just simply informing big studios, you know, big production companies, wherever they may be, that the fans don't want this. And it's such a weird thing, I think, especially people like Disney and stuff, right, where they purposely don't want to listen to the fans. They purposely want to do everything but address and appeal to the fans, Lucasfilm, whatever you want to call them, right, all these big brands out there. And then when the fans voice their displeasure, they also don't want to listen. So you don't want to hear what we have to say. You don't want to see what we have to say. And ultimately, you don't care what we say. So in general, we have no voice in whatsoever in some of these, you know, products and platforms that we've invested, you know, the best part of our entire adult existence kind of following. It's really disappointing. So let's continue on with the YouTube article. I mean, the Verge article. So the following. YouTube has announced it's experimenting with hiding dislikes to discourage dislike mobs from deliberately downvoting videos from creators and channels. The experiment is a different implementation that solutions of the company has previously discussed, but it is similar to other app attempts platforms like Instagram have taken up to nip targeted attacks in the bud. The current setup stats um, for both likes and dislikes are viewable in the creator individual uh, studio, but only likes will be displayed publicly on the video. In support article explaining the test, YouTube says that dislikes can negatively impact a creator's well-being and may motivate targeted campaigns or dislikes on a creator's video. Basically, the idea is that seeing a dislike number and watching it go up could it could be enough to motivate um, motivation to join in and make the number larger. Yes, that's true. That's not <clears throat> that's obviously not an exaggeration. There's definitely people that go out there and dislike mob a certain video, but I would hazard a guess that out of ten videos <clears throat> that get bombed in the dislikes. For the most part, I'd say maybe eight or let's say seven to be up to be like fair of those videos. Seven out of those 10 videos are justifiably downvoted. There's a reason why, a legit reason why that has happened and why maybe the creator of the channel hasn't addressed it. Um, maybe they're trying to hold them account, remind people, whatever it may be, there is a legit reason behind it. It's very, it's very rarely uh, people get unfairly downvote bombed on YouTube for the most part. And like I said, it's such a, not like I said, but... <clears throat> The odd thing as well about this whole thing is it's, it's as if they're like purposely trying to change the nature of what it is to be a creative. Um, you're never going to please everybody. You're never going to be everyone's cup of tea. There's going to be people out there that are going to be annoyed by your face, by your voice, by your mannerisms, everything that you do. So to, to take away all these mechanisms in an effort to protect people's well-being, you're also not, protect, not basically providing a platform that is real life right that isn't that's basically a skewed way of how it is to be a creator in the real world people can argue oh youtube isn't the real world but yes it is an element of the real world and it just doesn't make any sense really because in the real world when you step out there and you put something you know you put your name to something or you step in front of the camera and you put yourself out there as people say you're opening yourself up for criticism and praise right it's obviously high risk high reward it's just the nature of the beast and to take this away in an effort to heal um you know people and to you know aid their mental health is a little bit um short-sighted and also doesn't really go to address the actual problem that's at hand there right the fact that maybe it's so easy to leave comments on people's accounts it's so easy to set up channels to troll people whatever it may be there, there are things that are actually um that are actually you know people abusing the copyright system for instance there's things that actually need to be addressed I think more so than just the dislikes and likes bar. But hey, what do I know? And of course, there's a little illustration here showing it, which is ridiculously in, uh, redundant. Essentially, you've got the like and dislike bar on the left-hand side. I mean, the emote or the kind of icons or whatever. On the likes, you've got the numbers. And then under dislike, you've just got dislike written in text. If you're going to take away the dislike bar, there is no argument to be, to be said that you might as well just take away the upvote. Right? There's no, there's no reason to have a like and a dislike bar if you're going to only show the numbers for one you might as well take both off and just have the views there as a as a thing or do what they did prior right well it was the stars i wonder what happened with the stars i think the same thing happened with stars is what happened with the with the like and dislike i'm assuming right that's the same thing i'm pretty sure um but it doesn't make any sense really i continue to hear creators rely on likes and dislikes as a form of feedback to guide their creative output but much like purposely giving a game a bad review on a stream it's easy to turn that what 
Much like purposely giving a game a bad review in a stream. It's not your prerogative though if you bought the game. You can give any review you want. What kind of write-up is this? It's easy to turn what could be useful feature into a surface, into another surface for abuse. When YouTube first announced it was looking into addressing the problem with dislikes, it was considering free ideas, hiding the numbers for both likes and dislikes, adding more friction for disliking something through requiring extra interaction or removing likes and dislikes entirely. Now, I quite like the second one, which would mean basically, you know how sometimes on YouTube it asks you to sort of like leave a review for a channel or for a video? Like, so it'd be a random little drop down menu. That might make more sense where you click dislike and it will say to you, which are you sure or which part of the video did you not like first second or beginning da, 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 whatever something like that just to kind of give you an extra step so people don't automatically just click it and keep moving um this test um does half of what the uh, first option proposed and it makes a certain amount of sense if uh, if the dislike numbers are the problem why not just hide them and see what happens instagram experimented with a similar kind of test when it decided to hide likes on posts obviously likes are inherently positive but chasing a high like count can have its own negative impact on creators whose livelihoods depend on closely monitoring interactions with their posts and appearing well liked. YouTube isn't testing hiding dislikes on all creators' videos, but it noticed them on your page or you have an opinion on the viewer. YouTube is cutting feedback on its site. Hopefully people say no. The funny thing is, this will just end up getting... Um, people will end up finding a, a loophole in it anyway. They'll just end up finding a way to basically voice their displeasure that isn't just dislikes. So, for instance, imagine a video has like a million views, but it only has a couple of likes on it. And then you go in the comments and it's like, you know, nearly 10,000 comments. It's pretty clear to see that the video isn't doing that well and people aren't happy with what the content is about or whatever it may be. So they'll just get around it, right? It's same way. I think that's what happens on Twitter, right? People get ratioed. That's the whole idea, right? Where you have the like and the retweet. But then if there's loads of, if there's way more comments than retweets and likes, it definitely goes to show that people don't generally agree with what that person is saying. Um, but yeah, I think this is a terrible idea. Again, it's a, another death nail in YouTube. Another indication that they're purposely catering to the bigger platforms wouldn't surprise me if a, you know, a company like Disney were the ones that were at the kind of the forefront of leading this charge. I read something, an article the other day, I suppose, but it was Joe Biden. Um, he basically was responsible for maybe putting this um, or suggesting this to somebody at YouTube, maybe spoke to Susan, I don't know. But something occurred there. Um, that obviously is now going to negatively affect creators in the long run. It's only going to help the bigger channels to kind of stave off any kind of criticism or accountability. And in the end, we're, just, we're still going to be uploading videos because we've got nowhere else to go.